All right, here's the assessment six review. Now, let me say before I start, you should not, I repeat, not be just using this video to sit here and take notes. Um, this video is for like, if you get stuck on something, you know, you watch a problem or, you know, after you've done it, you can use it to kind of help you like get it in your mind or whatever. But if you sit here and copy, just as it, if it's notes, it's not gonna, help your brain practice to know what to do. So, here we go. So, um, determine the factors and the roots of the polynomial. So you have a couple options here. I mean, you could graph that thing um, and try to look for x-intercepts, but right away I do notice that these all have an x in common. So when I pull out that x, I get 6x squared minus 11x minus 10. And this is something I should try to factor. So, um, this is a little bit harder than normal, but you know, 6x squared. 6x squared, I could use a 6x and an x, or I could use a 3x and a 2x. So let's check that out. Now 10, um, I got some options there, so 5 and 2. So let's try that. So if I put um, 5 and 2 in this situation, um, I can't put the 5, I can't put the 2 with the 6, I'll put the 5 and the 2 there. So it makes 12 and 5, and 12 and 5 do not make 11. All right, um, so let's try it down here. So I can't put the two here, so five here and two there. That makes 15 and four, and that will make 11. So I think I found it. We would have tried other things if that hadn't worked. So three X and two X, two and five. This is 15. I want that 15 to be negative, and this is four, so positive. And there we go, there's my factors. And my roots are my zeros, so that would be zero, negative two-thirds, and five over two. And if you just don't know, you can always take these parts and set them equal to zero. Like if you take x equal to zero, you get zero. If you take three x plus two equal to zero and solve it, that's how you get negative two-thirds. And same thing for two x minus five. Solve it, you get five halves, negative, positive five halves. Okay. All right, over here. Oh, let's see. So, um, looking for cubes. So, let's see, 250. Um, I would say 25 times 10 or 125 times 2 because 125 is a perfect cube. And this is going to be 5, right? 5 times 5 times 5. So, I'm bringing out a 5. 5 times 6 is 30. Leave some space. Put my cube root back with a 2. Now, 3 goes into 6 twice, so H2 is out. 3 goes into 5 once, so 1j is out and 2 are left in, and 3 does not go into 2 at all, so k2 is stuck in there. And why did I write y? I'm so used to writing a y, I think. j. It's kind of a weird one. Alright, so um, this guy. So um, I need to apply this power to everything in here, so I'm going to have 8 to the 4 thirds. I'll fix that later x to the, I need to multiply 2 times 4 thirds, so you can do it by hand, you know, 2 times 4 thirds is going to be 8 over 3, but don't forget you can also grab your calculator, um, make a fraction, so I want 2 times 4 thirds, so alpha y equals um, 4 over 3, and it's going to tell you that. Alright, then i got to multiply 3 times 4 thirds, well the 3's cancel, so I get um, y to the 4th. Now let's simplify this 8 to 4 thirds. Remember, I can do it two ways. I can do eight to the fourth, which is too big for me in my head, or I can do the cube root of eight, which I do know is two. And then once I have that two, I say two to the fourth is 16. So this is gonna be 16, x to the eight thirds, y to the fourth. And you know, you could also, if you're desperate, put in eight to the four thirds, like that. All right, um, let's see, over here, we're factoring. These are perfect cubes, both of them. So remember, that's gonna be a binomial and then a trinomial. So I'm gonna put M and three, because these are the cube roots of these numbers. Then I do square, multiply, square. So I square the M, multiply these together, and square the three. And then we use soap, okay? I use the same sign, opposite, always positive. Same, opposite, always positive. All right, here, um, they don't have anything in common, so I'm ready to start factoring. What makes eight is two times two times two, so two x, and this one's five. 
I square the 2x, that's 4x squared, multiply together, square the 5. All right, and then same, opposite, always positive. All right, over here, it says convert to exponential form. So what is going on here is it's saying 27 to the 1 3rd, x to the 1 3rd, and y to the 2 thirds. Okay, now simplify. There's nothing I can simplify here, but I do know this 27 to the 1 3rd. I know it's the cube root of 27, so it would be 3, x to the 1 3rd, and then y to the 2 thirds. And just leave it like that. All right, um, down here, we're factoring perfect squares here. So that's going to be simple. I'm going to do 5x and 5x, and a plus 1 and a minus 1. That way there is no middle, because a negative 5x and positive 5x cancel. All right, now here, it looks like that one, but these are not perfect squares. Well, that's because they both divide by 3. So I have to pull the 3 out, which leaves me 4x squared minus 25, and now they are perfect squares. So now I will make it 2x and 2x, and a plus 5 and a minus 5. Okay. All right, given this function, find f of negative 2. So f of negative 2 means I'm plugging in negative 2 for the x's. So that 2 is there, something squared, minus 7, something, minus 5. So this means I put negative 2 in here. So from here, you can put in your calculator, parentheses and all, or you can work it out. Negative 2 squared is 4, so I get 2 times 4, which is 8. Negative times a negative is a positive, 14, and then minus 5. So let's see. Um, <clears throat> it's 22 minus 5, that's 17. All right, over here, I got a graph here, and it says what are the roots? So the roots are the x-intercepts, so I would say negative 1, and also 1, 2, 3. But negative 1, I notice, is a double root because of that bouncing right there. So the factors would be x plus 1, the opposite of there, and squared, and x minus 3. So that could literally be the equation for it. Um, the end behavior, left side, this is left side here, left side goes down, so negative infinity right side goes up to infinity. Okay. All right, over here, given that x minus 2 is a factor of this, so that's lucky you gave me that because now I can put 2 in my synthetic division. So I have 2, negative 15, 37, and negative 30. All right, bring down my 2. 2 times 2 is 4. That adds up to negative 11. Oh, let's see. Um, multiplies to negative 22. 8 and 7, that's 15, positive, 30, all right, good, so we're happy. All right, now from here, um, so basically I know that x minus 2 is one of my factors, I mean you told me it was, and 2 is one of my roots, but I still need two more factors and two more roots here because it's x to the third. So I think, let's see, x to the third, so x squared and x. I think I'll just try to factor this right here because I'm really what I'm trying to, I'm trying to solve this problem, you know, equal to zero. So I think I might be able to factor that. Now you could use a quadratic formula if you don't like factoring, but it's going to take you a little longer. All right, so 15, let's do 5 and 3. I think if I do 3 here and 5, that'll be 6x and 5x. That'll make a negative 11 if they're both negative, and that makes positive. Because um, it was asking for the factored form, so... Eh, never mind. It won't always factor, but this one did. So 2x minus 5 and x minus 3. So my 0 is 5 over 2 and positive 3. All right, other side. So this is an old problem here. My end behavior, both sides are going down, negative infinity. And I need a equation for this. Now let me see my formula. The vertex right here is negative 1, 4. And I do notice it goes 1, 1, 2, 4, so there's no stretch, so this a value is just 1. So I went left 1 and up 4, but um, this a value actually, there's no stretch, but it is a reflection, so it is a negative, and then x left 1 would be plus 1, and then up 4 is plus 4. And you can always put that in your calculator and check and see if it makes that picture. All right, over here. Um, I'm just looking to multiply. Now, when somebody gives you things like this and they just want you to work with it, nobody wants you to write this. Like, I know that, you know, that could be a squared cube root, but nobody's expecting you to write it like that because they want you to, like, multiply this together. Because I'm supposed to simplify it, right? So that just means when I multiply, I am adding my exponents. 
So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And then I get a to the 2 thirds plus a to the 2. So I basically am adding, hold on a second, I gotta put my, plug my computer in. So I am doing, um, oopsie, two thirds, and I am adding what two? All right, so eight thirds. So a to the eight thirds, and then look here, b and b to the negative one. So the exponents are one and negative one. I'm supposed to add those, so I get b to the zero. So you can put a b to the zero, but eventually you should just say a to the eight thirds, and the b disappears because it's a one. All right, over here, I'm dividing. So I'm gonna subtract my exponents. I got 15 divided by 24, so those divide by three. So I get five over eight. Five minus a half is um, four and a half. Or nine halves, so that goes on top. And over here, I'm getting a one minus seven, so it's negative six. So that means that y to the sixth goes on the bottom. Oops, sorry. All right, so let's see. Try doing these without a calculator. So a radical five times a radical five pops out a five. Four radical seven plus two radical seven is nine radical seven. Here, um, I'm multiplying my exponents, so they cancel. So 12 just stays. Here, um, you know, negative eight squared would be 64, and then I'm asked to do the cube root of that, or I could do um, the cube root of eight, negative eight is negative two, and I square it. So either way, I get four. Here, um, I don't know the fourth root of these, but if I take that fourth root away and just do two times eight, then I have 16 to the one fourth. So that is the fourth root of 16, which is two. Here I have the same base, so I'm allowed to add my exponents. So one half plus three halves is four halves. Well, four halves is two, so five squared is 25. All right, down here. So I am going to um, simplify these. I got uh, 54 is, let's see, nine times six, this is three times three, and three times two. So I'm bringing out a three, there's already a three there. So I get a negative nine, leave some space, put my two back, Three goes into six twice, and there's already an x there, so it'll be x to the third. And three does not go into two at all. All right, over here, I'm multiplying. So I multiply first, I get 15. I get the square root, this is 36. x squared stays, and then y squared. So look at that, 36, um, this answer right here is six. Two goes into two, two goes into two, so six xy times 15. So 15 times six, is 90, so 90xy, so everything came out. Over here again, multiply together first because they're both fourth roots. So I have 3y, fourth root, this is 81, um, x to the eighth, and y squared. So um, let's check the fourth root of 81. So if you want to do that on your calculator, you could um, press a four and then the math button, go down to this random root and it's going to do the fourth root, put 81, it's 3. All right, so I don't have to break it down, I just know it's 3. Well, 3 times 3 here is 9. Leave some space, fourth root. X comes out, I know about that Y there. 4 goes into 8 twice. 4 does not go into there at all, so I'm going to leave Y2 in here, and I can't forget about that Y there. Also, don't forget this guy. All right, division. So, uh-oh. This is a typo, this should be all the way across. So 54 divided by two makes um, 27. So I'm gonna get the cube root of 27. And x9 and x5 means I have x4. And y1 and y10, one minus 10 is negative nine, so that goes down here. All right, so let's do that. The cube root of 27 is three. Three goes into four once and that means there's one X left in the cube root. 
Three goes into nine three times here. Okay. All right, this guy. So this one, these two go together because you have the same type of radical. So three radical two minus five radical two is negative two radical two. And this guy just stays on the end. All right, over here, I hope these all go together. They're all square roots, but let's check and see. Eight is four times two, and that's a double two. So I'm gonna bring out a two. Two times negative three is negative six x. And then there's a radical with a two x left. All right, let's see. 32 is 16 times two. The square root of 16 is four. So I'm gonna bring that out right now. Um, and then leave a two inside, so this is looking good. And then two goes into three once, and one stays in. So those will go together. Over here, 27 is nine times three, and then this is double three, so a three comes out. Three times five is 15, with an x, and the square root with a three x. So this guy is not gonna go with the others because he has a three x inside. So we'll just put those together as negative 10 x, because negative six minus four, radical two x, and then minus 15 x, radical three x. So that is it. All right, well, let's see. Cube root of eight is two, so six times two is 12. Uh, 12 here is four times three, so this is double two. So two's coming out. So let's see, two times four is eight, so I get eight radical three. And then over here, square root of 16 is four. So 12 minus four is um, eight. So I get eight plus eight radical three. All right, last one here, I get 20. I'm foiling, uh, minus four radical two. Inside is minus 15 radical two. And these two, negative times a negative is a positive. And let's see, three and one make three. But then I also have the radical two times radical two. So radical two times radical two is two, so it times two. All right, so this is six. So 20 plus six is 26, and this turns into negative 19 radical two. All right, last question here. So on this problem, I see that I'm finding the factors and um, the zeros or the roots. So I do notice they gave me a picture and it goes through one. Now, I'm supposed to have three answers. I only see one answer, so that means the other two are imaginary. So I'm gonna put one in my synthetic division. Bring down my one, get a one, adds up to zero. Give me a zero, which makes three, and got zero. Okay, so that checked out. So that's be x squared and this is an x. So I have to solve this. x squared plus three equals zero. So one of my factors is already x minus one. One of my roots is positive one and I got two more coming. All right, so let's go solve that. So x squared plus three equals zero. Well, I'm gonna take away three, get x squared equals negative three, and then I'm gonna do my square root. I do not know the square root of three. So I'll just say plus or minus i radical three and just leave it like that. Remember to put the i there. So I got x minus i radical three and x plus i radical three. And then over here, I have an i radical three and a minus i radical three. Or you could just write this. And there you have it. Bye-bye. <laughs>